Today, we're recovering an absolute monster of a character who with nothing but his muscles overpowers everything in his way, so I hope you're excited for this, going back to some Yu Hakusho scaling. And so with that, we're going to be going more in depth than ever before as we cover the true power of Taguro you never knew, and I feel confident saying that. Now, that said, if you're new to the channel and you like Yu Hakusho, you'll be happy to know I have many videos covering Yu Hakusho scaling, but there's one big difference this time around that those that have been following the channel will be aware of. I now break AP down to joules per centimeter cubed to be the most precise as humanly possible when factoring in AP. And that's what's going to be happening today. Additionally, I have one last thing to address for those that have been following my latest videos covering Naruto scaling, and it's the whole idea of calcing versus scaling. Let me address that real quick. In this video, you will see calcs and you will see scaling. I will talk about the differences and the significance of them, and lastly use this video to show you why some of the scaling is going the way it is in Naruto. With that out of the way, let's cover some Taguro. We start off watching Taguro go into a room with a demon named Harem, and we can see that by comparing Taguro's massive height of this many meters, Heron, I mean, Heron's really big, and this may explain why they can casually cause this destruction here. Now, notice that Heron never actually hit the ground. That was caused by the force going through Taguro's body, and with the kinetic energy of moving Taguro downwards, did that feat. To lowball it, however, we'll just pretend that Heron actually directly struck the ground, and that means we're looking at a crater of this many cubic centimeters in volume, putting the total joules at this many or very low end building level, as cratering, which is what happened here, is 87 joules per centimeter cubed. Since we have the amount of cubic centimeters of volume for the crater, easy math. However, we also see clear fragmentation all beyond the crater as well. We need to factor that, and in looking at the scans, we see the highest consistency of fracturing reaching out beyond Heron's body. For this, we can use the scan that showed the destruction afterwards and find at least this many cubic centimeters of fragmentation coming in at an additional this many joules leading to the total feet carrying this many joules or very low end building level. Still. <laughs> so yeah, the fracturing didn't add much. That just leaves the AP then. Remember how Heron is large? Yeah, well, so are their paws or hands. I'm gonna go with paws. And, well, that means those paws are carrying at least this many joules per centimeter cubed, or very low-end wall-level joules per centimeter cubed. To break that down just a little bit more, that means if we were to take the volume of Heron's paw, we would say that it has a certain amount of cubic centimeters making up its volume. Each cubic centimeter of that space is carrying this number here of joules, making up the total joules. That's kind of what's happening here and how we can be so precise with AP. So with only a calc and no scaling to go off of, Heron is showing to be comfortably lower than Seibyako of the four Saint Beasts. But that's Heron, we're here for Taguro, so... In looking at what Taguro did and acknowledging the difference in kinetic energy acting on the other's body, we can find that Taguro exerted hundreds of times more force on Heron as what Heron exerted on Taguro via, again, the difference of each person's velocity change in being hit. Basically, we're just talking normal potential and kinetic energy things. But to lowball it, we'll be instead using a 50 times instead. Just because what we're going here with is that Taguro was moved just that small amount downwards, and we don't want any chance of high balls. Low balls guarantee minimum correctness. At minimum, it is what I'm saying it is type accuracy, right? So we're going to go with 50 times, even though we know it's much more. And when we factor that all in, this would mean Taguro would have to, again, extremely lowballed, have to be showing at least this many total joules, or city block level total joules, and his AP coming in at around this many joules per centimeter cubed, or we're talking high end small building level. Another point to address in this feat is the potential for it to have been done by air pressure. We know he will use air pressure to kill many people, and with the only shot we see of him killing Heron, it artistically would suggest it to be impossible for his fist to have reached far enough for said feet. Suggesting air pressure. But artistically isn't the end-all be-all here, okay? But if 
we were to assume air pressure, the AP is then at least this many joules per centimeter cubed, or we're talking city block level AP. I could, of course, be using many, many scans we know to grow scales above with even the lowest of his percentages, as, of course, even false 20% to Guru was comfortably above, again, anyone among the four saint beasts in literally every category. But just to only focus on his feats, what he calcs to, we're going to be going over those instead, just to give you an idea on how I've been going with Naruto, right, in my past videos. Again, check those out if you haven't. But this should really help clear things up. Let's look at this crater caused by false 80% to Guru, where we see with a punch he destroys all the ground around him and shakes the surrounding trees. What's very important here, however, is if this was made like by his actual fist making contact with the ground or just not at all. We don't get to see the ground during the punch. He's hovering above the ground and crater. And though he has an insane track record for using air pressure, it's not clearly supported until this by Hiei, who is vastly weaker than Taguro, where we now see direct evidence of air pressure being the cause of destruction. I will not be scaling Taguro via Hiei, it's simply evidence of how the punches are being caused in the same manner. So I'm saying that this is now, I mean, direct evidence that Taguro would have done it in a similar manner backed, of course, by every other means of him ever using air pressure. With Hiei, no contact is clearly shown, where instead of his fist being on the ground, again, still white background like with Taguro's, it's clear that there is the destruction itself instead. I mean, hell, the destruction of the ground is clearly a good bit away from his fist, and he even shows to be hovering exactly as the much stronger Taguro had been. It's, it's clear as day, right? The explosion, the cratering of the ground. You can see in the next panel of Hiei's, the cratering is still being caused. The very first one, where that explosion is, his fist is not, right? So that's kind of what I'm saying here. That Hiei's was absolutely by air pressure. It couldn't have been by anything else, really. Anyways, via Hiei's feet and everything else, this gives us great knowledge of the feet talking about Taguro, and backs up what we'd expect of the power given what we see later on from Taguro as well. Air pressure, a lot of it, it's a matter of consistency which we want when scaling characters. With that, let's look at the crater itself. What we find is a total volume of this many cubic centimeters of cratering, which is 87 joules per centimeter cubed, with the amount of cubic centimeters we're talking about, this gives us a total joules of this many total joules, or town level total joules, and leads to the AP, which is based on the cubic centimeters of his fist, where he's having this many joules per centimeter cubed, or city block level AP. If, however, you don't believe it was air pressure that caused the crater, then yes, the feat is calced much weaker, but you do have to kind of go against everything else, especially with Hiei, you have to kind of contend with that. Um, with him certainly being much weaker than Taguro at this point. It certainly doesn't show it was air pressure though, so I understand. I, I know it's backed by multiple other things, again, but I understand that it's only backed and not proven, so I do understand if you don't take it as air pressure. Either way, this isn't his end-all be-all feat, but there is more to the feat and I will be considering it as the most accurate and consistent especially going forward with it as air pressure. And even without this feat though, this video is fine with the calcs and the scaling used throughout the rest of it. So it's not the most important. Regardless, moving on, we also see again that the trees around the crater move. Even if by just a slight amount, just realize how impressive that is. I mean, imagine moving a tree just a small amount by punching the air in front of you from Taguro's distance. Really note the distance between him and the trees. Imagine now moving multiple trees that distance by punching the ground where the kinetic energy is so great that just the leftover energy that goes to the sides instead of straight down is enough to still move them. His air pressure essentially made an earthquake effect on the surroundings. When we factor in this for the full feet, we find an AP total of, well, never mind. <laughs> it's still city block level joules per centimeter cubed. It, it did, in fact, turn out to mean less than I thought, talking about the trees here. Um, just basing it on the joules per centimeter cube degree, 
uh, yeah, just the trees didn't matter as much as I had hoped. But it is what it is. I'm, I still feel that it is worth calking an entire feat for what the whole feat is. But finally, that means we can get to the dark tournament fight itself. So now we're at the highest ends of everything. We're looking at Taguro versus Yusuke. A hell of a fight and right off the bat we have Taguro vaping demons in the crowd, just going to his false 80%. Based on vaping a human, we'd expect a minimum of around this many total jewels or extreme low end building level to have been shown with just his aura. However, note that these demons would of course actually be above human level durability, but still. The impressive thing about this feat is more in line with how it steps up the scaling for the other feats. We know for sure that his air pressure feats kill beings that could survive his aura, showing directly that the total jewels of his aura here is equal at most to the total jewels of his air pressure. Or vice versa, that the air pressure would be at least equal to his uh, aura there. This includes the air pressure from something as small as his thumb. And I don't mean from his thumb, I mean like the air pressure of his thumb. And so to keep moving on, we next have Taguro cratering and destroying a good chunk of the arena and the stadium walls with just his air pressure. This is, again, all these air pressure feats. I, it's just once more we're seeing a feat that involves pure white background with the destruction and it being simply air pressure. It's consistency matters. Don't we, is that not something we care about, right? For this feat, we're looking at a volume of this many cubic centimeters of cratered rock coming in with total jewels of this many here. But we still have the stadium wall to get. In that, we can see based on its size that we're looking at this many cubic centimeters of destruction via explosive fragmentation this time, making for a now a total jewels of this number here. Pretty impressive. And yet we need to factor in that it was merely air pressure, such that his full contact attack instead would carry instead, at minimum, at least, this number here of total joules, or we're talking town level total joules. This puts the AP right at this amount of joules per centimeter cubed, or we're talking city block level, and is showing consistency once more, which is great. And to be clear, this doesn't factor in the empty space between the arena and the wall. Even more so, we later see Taguro straight up stop his punch with Yusuke bracing to stop the punch when he'd been dodging because they knew his air pressure could potentially reach his friends at the top of the stadium and kill them. I mean, that's insane in of itself, but no feet, nothing to calc. Oh wait, we can see in his false 100% he shows he absolutely can do that, and casually at that. But that's beyond false 80%, so back to him. Next is Taguro destroying the arena itself. We see the punch, and I mean arena, not stadium, I'm talking about the ring. <laughs> we see the punch, and it certainly wasn't air pressure this time. And we then also see a crater below where the arena was, as there's basically nothing left of it. And here's the thing I noticed. A lot seem to think this is the shot to use for the crater, despite it not showing the full size in the least. Some have assumed the crater was the same size and diameter as the arena. I mean, that makes sense if you just have that one bad shot to use, but me, I'm gonna use this shot, where we actually see the entire crater fully comparable to the actual stadium itself. I mean, it's right there. And compare that crater to the stadium? It's far larger than just one of the rings or the arena. But anyway, the first scan does at least represent the depth better, and so I'll be going with that instead of assuming something crazy like it's a perfect sphere cap or something, alright? With all of that addressed, first the arena itself. Taguro easily showed to violently fragment the entire thing of around this many cubic centimeters of space coming in with a total joules of this amount here. Next, the crater. We can easily see a crater of a total volume of this many cubic centimeters and via cratering, a total joules of this amount, and in adding both parts together, we find for the full feet a total joules of this amount here, or multi-city block level. As for the AP, we know there's no air pressure this time, so how strong then? We're seeing this many joules per centimeter cubed, or higher in building level joules per centimeter cubed. So yeah, 
characters can and do in fact produce feats weaker than their other seemingly weaker feats when calking. It all matters, it's all factored in. We don't play favorites, we can only show what the numbers are produced from the calcs. And as for actual max power to Guru, we never get any impressive feats that we can actually calc in regards to destruction. Sure, he hurts Yusuke and outright blows away Yusuke's spirit gun with just the air pressure he breathes out of his lungs and such, but that's the thing. That's scaling. Nothing I've shown so far has involved any scaling other than maybe like uh, just the smallest amount where we can do um, a comparison sake towards his own feat, right? Uh, his kinetic energy on Heron versus what Heron did to him. So that has a bit of scaling, but it was still like Taguro's feat showing destruction, okay? So little caveat there. But essentially, we're, we've stuck to just calcs, okay? And we're talking like city block level at best. Taguro's way weaker apparently, right? Essentially, no scaling has taken place, and that's what I want to get to, alright? Calking and scaling aren't the same thing. Calking is simply a tool used for the purpose of helping scale characters, but it doesn't factor everything in and completely ignores many chains of power within any given series. If you've been watching me scale Naruto in the past few videos, you'll have seen many lower end numbers largely due to requiring massive AoE for their destruction. I know many of those attacks scale better than what's calced, but they do calc low. And talking about AP of course, not total jewels, just in case that was missed. But what do they scale above when we're talking about scaling? And that's the crux of it. Let me show you what solid scaling is and where Taguro really is in power. Hell, actually, even if we just used Taguro's feats only that I just covered and scaled to his actual maximum power via the scaling laid out in the series, he at least scales in AP to around this many joules per centimeter cubed or small town level. But let's get to the full scaling. Note, my other feats there were just his false, not true, but false 80%. So I'm talking about just even if we just used those feats and did even just the most basic of scaling for him. That's what this number is for his AP. But let's actually scale each feat. What does it exactly mean for Taguro to have overpowered the spirit guns and Yusuke to have overpowered Taguro back? How much stronger exactly does each character rise as they fight each other? Well, to start, let's look at Yusuke. Someone who isn't Taguro, but Taguro at different times scales above. And here we have cuffed Yusuke. Punching false 80% to grow and it does nothing. I mean literally nothing to him. Yet, when we see him hit to grow with his spirit gun, we have this feat here where it blows up the stadium walls and drags him through the forest, clearly uprooting trees, and even breaking an unknown amount of them, with finally to grow walking back having taken absolutely zero damage from it. This is a hell of a feat. We can see that the spirit gun clearly destroyed this many cubic centimeters of the stadium, already coming out to this many total jewels or multi-city block level. But we still have the trees. When you factor in the distance and the amount of trees based on that distance, we can find that we're looking at around an additional this many total jewels or city block level. Combine the two for the full feet and we have this many total jewels or multi-city block level. However, the spirit gun there is very large. I mean, Taguro is large, and well, just look at the spirit gun compared to him, right? Its volume is at least this many cubic centimeters, meaning each cubic centimeter of that spirit gun must be carrying at least this many joules, aka this many joules per centimeter cubed for the AP or wall level joules per centimeter cubed. Whoa, that's so weak. But here's the important part. Taguro being completely unharmed means his durability is higher than that same spirit gun. This would indicate you have to have more than this amount of joules per centimeter cubed to put a scratch on false 80% Taguro. But there's so much more to this. We see that Taguro's aura is greater in potency than Yusuke's spirit gun, as it's able to cut up that same Yusuke that his spirit gun couldn't even scratch Taguro. And then even that aside, the aura is already way less potent than just his air pressure. Just look at this. It's here Yusuke takes off his cuffs. Again, did you remember that that last feat was cuffed Yusuke? Even just scaling Yusuke aside via the cuffs 
Look at his boost in power. We see now that Yusuke's basic punches are now casually far above his last spirit gun, and yet it destroys far less. See, now this is a feat that requires scaling to find its real power. That crater he's causing is pitiful by itself, but in scaling, we can compare it to that same spirit gun and find instead all the energy output within the volume of but a teenager's fist, or around this many cubic centimeters, is actually capturing the f at more, really, than the total force of his spirit gun, as he's damaging versus with the spirit gun wasn't damaging at all, putting the AP instead shown here at a minimum of around this many joules per centimeter cubed, or building level AP. But let's continue. Taguro powers up to false 100% and vapes a quarter of the audience. It's not going to come out as a massive number, so don't worry about it, just in that we can't factor in demon durability, so it can only account for human vaping. Yet, what we can look at is this. The same Yusuke whose punches were building level AP is now injured by just the air pressure of false 100% Taguro's thumb. There's more. We showed Yusuke's punches and calculated their AP. We didn't factor in what uncuffed Yusuke's spirit gun would actually have for potency. Yeah, just like his actual spirit gun now that he's uncuffed. Using the basic scaling of the series, and again, this video isn't about all the scaling of the Yu Hakusho series, okay? I have an entire Yu Hakusho playlist if you want to check it out. But with that scaling, we know Yusuke's uncuffed spirit gun would have an AP equal to, at minimum, this many joules per centimeter cubed or large building level joules per centimeter cubed. And watch this. The man can literally breathe out air stronger than uncuffed Yusuke's spirit gun. The guy breathes away that level of force. This easily puts, say, the air pressure from his, like, his thumb bullets, like, above the same spirit gun as well. But where does his air pressure finger bullets scale to then? They don't cause damage, so the AP is low, right? No, because we can scale it to something else that's actually impressive. At this point, we would know his thumb would, with just air pressure, be hitting with at least this many total joules, or city level, but with AP of around this many joules per centimeter cubed, or large town level air pressure. Yeah, I'm talking about those are the numbers for the air pressure. This necessitates that the full contact of at least this many joules per centimeter cubed to determine the full contact power of his thumb striking out or mountain level. This has to be some kind of wink, right? There's no way. Hell no. I like, okay, look, are we seeing the same things? I'm talking now about a guy that in just the power difference of I'm at false 80% goes now I'm at my false 100%. So that's a 20% increase. Just sticking with his false numbers. We know it's a 10% increase if you go off of his true numbers. That little incremental small negligible difference in percentages and the difference in how the series scales from what we know he is now flicking air with more force than the powered up super version of the guy Yusuke that was too weak to injure the 80% version of Taguro with his spirit gun. You can rewind, I'm not doing anything crazy. All that's happening here is basic scaling. This attack carries X joules. This other attack scales above it, so it must have at least X joules as well. However, its volume shows to be the amount of joules is actually compacted into the volume of an attack that is, say, hundreds of times smaller. Spirit gun versus, like, Taguro's thumb, for example. Meaning the joules per centimeter cubed is hundreds of times larger. Necessarily so. You following? Factor in any other variables, such as air pressure, vaporizing, instead of just the X on its own and such. I mean, at this point, you can go back, rewatch the feats with the scaling. I mean, it's all there, but I just hope it's extremely evident how and why the scaling is showing what it is. The air pressure of thumb greater than full power spirit gun of extremely buffed Yusuke, whose punches are far away stronger than cuffed Yusuke spirit gun with its X amount of joules. Scaling chain, right? Anyway. The last bit of scaling for Taguro is to lastly factor in the difference of a punch versus a flick, as again that's just his thumb flicking, and that would lead us to the AP of a Taguro punch, which is kind of important to know, right? That's a pretty basic thing to want to know. 
Well, for that we compare the force of a flick to the force of a punch, this took a bit to find, and we're talking around this many times more force. Not only easily the case, you'd actually assume more unless you flick yourself as hard as you can and then consider a 37 times multiplier to that force. But let's consider a false 100% Tagura punch then. What we're looking at is a punch carrying the AP of around this many joules per centimeter cubed or large mountain level joules per centimeter cubed. And yet, there's more as we see that Tagura was never in his actual 100% and can in fact go his true 100%. Where when we factor in the series scaling, we find that he must have at minimum an AP of around this number here of joules per centimeter cubed or large island level joules per centimeter cubed. I'll say it here since I know the jump seems perhaps too large just looking at numbers, but the series is predicated continuously on linear exponential scaling. There's multiplicative scaling, additive scaling, there's a bunch of non-linear scaling for many different series. That, I believe I have a video that also covers the different types of scaling, so you can also see that. But that aside, all you need to know for this is that the absolute minimum of the scaling is a 2 times increase for every 10% more spirit or demon energy that a person has. Again, I ask if you haven't seen my other videos covering this in depth, then I suggest you watch them. But if not, just once more, look back at the Yusuke vs. Taguro fight, consider the power-ups yourself. Taguro actually went from 80% to 100% as a 10% increase, with, again, his true forms. Go over those feats, the power-ups themselves. Am I being fair in saying that the low ball is a 2 times increase? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I would say it's more than backed. So yes, his max power is at minimum large island level joules per centimeter cubed. It's honestly higher than I originally thought as back in the day, I hadn't been breaking everything down yet to the degree of joules per centimeter cubed. And now that I'm better at the math, it just goes to show what scaling can do for a series. And on that note, let's talk scaling one last time. So what happened here? See, this is a case where destruction didn't play a huge role in every feat. Rather, in calcs, they'd be weak. But in calcing the one feat that did cause immense damage, say like Eichibaku Tensei, or Shinra Tensei, even if the AoE is larger, we found an easy way to calc the feat, and we can have an idea of the total joules of that feat. It's by using those feats that the other feats that scale above it get to shine, despite not destroying much. But in Naruto, we're kind of missing the... We need a feat where they still destroy a lot and aren't using so much, gosh dang, AoE to do so, where it's required that it has so much AoE to do it at all. Or, regardless of how much it destroys, we know it scales, say, above Chibaku Tensei, but is like a fist, right? Say, Eight Gates Guy Punch, right? Something like that. We know it scales above Chibaku Tensei in pure AP. We can take the total force. You get the idea. Something like that. In this case, we were at the point of significantly outpacing giant spirit gun outputs of force by no more than the air pressure of yelling and thumbs. That's all I'm looking for to get huge scalings. A as anybody would. I mean, that's literally huge scaling. In my next video, I will be diving back into Naruto with the pain calcs. And I want you to understand going in, calcs and scaling are different. We calc as a subset to scaling, and we use calcs to help us scale. When I calc these enormous AoE feats by pain, they may not have crazy AP shown, but they scale. The problem in Naruto again is what they scale to, where the next best thing was also a large AoE, which kind of needs its own scaling because None of the, if it requires, if the destruction is massive but it required massive AoE to do it, it's not going to calc impressively. It's the exact opposite scaling with Yu Hakusho, where not only do we go from a decently small spirit gun down to a thumb, we go down to the air pressure of a thumb, like, are you kidding me? That's what I want to see in Naruto. If I could see a character punch with more force than the total force of, say again, Chibaku Tensei, then that means the cubic centimeters that makes up their fist holds the total force greater than a Chibaku Tensei. With just one feat like that, we'd have a hell of a scale. But that's the struggle, and is what I'm coming at you with in the next video. I'll have some scaling to help back up these calcs so their power can better be represented. All in all, 
That will be ending this video. I hope you were able to see how calcs and scaling work together and how they are different, and I of course hope you see Tagoro for his true power. Large island level joules per centimeter cube, make no mistake. The man is a monster, overpowering high energy attacks with no more than his finger flicks. It's, it's insane. If you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a subscriber and supporting the channel. Of course, like the video too, and feel free to comment any questions you have below. I'll answer them, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao. Stop.